y'all and welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. And if you're new around here, hello and welcome. My name is Katie Marie and we are doing Kate Miss over here on my channel. And today is a very exciting video because I'm going to be ranking all of the palettes I've tried for the last half of the year. So the last six months, we're going to put them all together and rank them from my least favorite all the way up to my most favorite. I did this at the beginning of the year for the first half. That video is already up. Obviously, you can watch it up here if you want to click the link and you can see what palettes I tried in the first half of the year. But we need to do the last half of the year before I put all of these palettes together and decide my ranking for the whole year. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top 30 palettes very, very soon and also going to be doing tutorials with the top five. I cannot wait to get into that. I'm going to be filming those next after this video. But yeah, that is coming soon later this month. And yeah. Oh, before we dive into the video, I did want to say that I cut my hair. So if you see a glimpse of like short hair, my hair is now this short. It's kind of out of frame, so it almost doesn't matter. But in case you see it and you're like, wait a minute, Katie always had like super duper long hair. I chopped it all off or my younger sister chopped it off. So just to throw that out there, let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? Before we get into ranking these, I just want to throw a disclaimer out there. I am not ranking these from like quality standpoint. I'm not ranking them from like price standpoint. The way I decide the ranking of my palettes is what I look back on when I use them, how easy they were to use, and also the type of looks that I was able to get from them. And I figured I would just verbally say it in a video because I do get comments on these type of videos going like, oh my goodness, you put this above this palette, and this palette I don't think is as nice quality as that palette. If you want to know quality, if you want to know price, if you want to know if I think they're worth it for the price, what have you, all that sort of things. Those are what you're going to be able to find in my review videos where I get into the nitty gritty. So all these palettes that I'm mentioning in today's video, I have included them in previous palette paloozas. So I'll go ahead and leave the link to the palette palooza playlist up here. And I go in depth, I share with you guys looks. I go into the formulas of the mattes, the formulas of the shimmers, how I like them, how they wear, all that sort of thing. So definitely check those videos out if you want to know nitty gritty. But these are just like my personal preference as I look back on these palettes, which ones I think you know back fondly of which ones I enjoy so much that I'm always thinking of the looks I get or just the color stories that grab me and just make me want to always go back for them that's how I rank these videos so with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the very last palette. This is coming at the very bottom of these palettes. I'll have the number here because I'm not going to mention the number because I know I'm going to get tripped up. At the bottom, we are going to have this palette. This is Juvia's Place, the Rebel Grays palette. This palette, like formula-wise, I didn't think was like anything bad. Definitely, you know, is Juvia's Place formula. I really did enjoy it. But the reason it's coming at the very bottom is because I didn't enjoy using it. I created one look and I didn't really want to create any more. I, I can't remember how many I did. I did more than one, but I kind of had to force myself because since the two shimmers, literally look the same on the eyes and you only have one dark and one light and this dark is honestly not that dark it's more of a mid-tone and this shadow here is a satin if you guys know me that's just a recipe for disaster it's not something I like so for me this palette it's like yeah if I needed a gray eye look or if I was wanting to incorporate some gray into a look I would reach for this but as far as grading a complete look from this I wish I had a black or if I you know grabbed a black from a different palette I could get a look that I really did enjoy from this palette but definitely nothing when it comes to their variety so you're gonna see a lot of quads at the bottom of this video just because for me you know when a palette really stands out in my mind and gets to the top of the whole ranking it has a lot to do with it being very versatile and me being able to create a lot of different type of fun and unique looks and with this one doesn't matter which way you turn it you can't get that creative with it so hence why it's coming in at the bottom next is going to be the Juvia's Place the Rebel Mints palette this one also annoyed me just a little bit because I wish they had just tweaked it a little bit to either make these two you know one a little bit more deeper one a little bit more obviously different they look different in the pan but when you put them on your eyes they're very very similar very very close and with them you know that those being the only mattes you can't get it any deeper this again is just like a one trick pony for me I can get one look that I like if you're someone who likes to have quads and likes to have palettes that you can like use a bunch at one time I do think you might like these because if I was able to use other shadows you know other shadows to deepen up this look it could create some really pretty looks the shimmers are a little bit more farther apart but still on the eyes like they're not terribly far apart but I will say they're incredibly pretty so they're very nice but when it comes to eyeshadow looks and I'm someone who only uses one palette I'm not someone who reaches you know into a bunch of different ones mainly because I review so many on here that I can't review a palette if I'm reaching for a bunch of other palettes to create one look if that makes any sense so that's why I always stick to one palette so for me personally that's why this came in last so I will say the shining star of these are definitely the shimmers they're very pretty next is the Juvia's Place the Rebel Honey palette this palette was a nice palette but definitely a palette that 
is just a one trick pony for me. I got one look that I liked and any other way I tried to move these around and change up, it always just looked the same or it was just a little bit too muddy, especially with the mats. These two mid-tone mats especially being so close and just so similar, you really couldn't see a whole lot of difference. So it's kind of like, oh, what's the point? There's only one shimmer, which I appreciate that there was more mats, but still it just wasn't quite what I had, would want in a little quad because these two are, literally look the same on the eyes. Like they're very, very subtle differences. This is a little bit more intense. This is a little bit lighter, but if you just use this and blended this out, a couple extra moments you would get it to look like this so that's where it's just kind of like very repetitive all of these quads just weren't for me because they were monochromatic but almost to a fault for me like I enjoy a monochromatic palette especially if it's a color story I like but if it's so monochromatic that it almost doesn't matter which color you use all the looks look the same I don't like that so for me that's a big reason why all of these quads from Juvia's Place are landing so low Speaking of which, next is the last one, the Rebel Army palette from Juvia's Place. This one landed the highest because it is green, but still, it's another palette where it's like, it almost didn't matter what colors you used, it was all the same. These are the only two mattes, so it's like, do you want a really dark green outer corner, or do you want a really like, you know, almost like a brown army green outer corner? They were just so very similar, and then the two shimmers, this was very bright and this was very deep, but I mean, I wish they would have done like a bright, like almost iridescent inner corner type of shade here, and did it like super blinding that you could use either all over the lid or as an inner corner highlight, and then had this green, and that would have given it a little bit more versatility. I would have still wanted one of these colors to be more mid-tone, so you can have a really dark and mid-tone color and then it would have been like a really great little quad but as it is I don't know they were just too close like it was too too much of a one-trick pony I got a look that I thought was very pretty but I didn't really have any inspiration or any desire to go back into it so that kind of tells me that it's just not the type of palette for me. Next in my ranking is the Musée Beauty or K-Lov Beauty. I always say Musée. I'm sorry. They rebranded this year. But this is their Honor palette. And this palette was very, very nice. But if you guys see this, the color story just wasn't quite there for me. There was a lot of very mauve, very light tone mauves in this palette. And for me, I'm just not into the whole mauve look. Anytime I do a whole mauve look, especially if it's very like light and airy, I never quite like it. I, I Maybe if one of these mobs were really deep mob, then I could have gotten a look that I did enjoy. But as it is, when I reached for the mobs, I wasn't into it. But I did appreciate that they had the gold, the green, and the blue. Hence why it's getting a little bit higher in the countdown. Because I did appreciate that. And the one look I got, there was one look, I think it was the first look I did with it. Which I'll have a video up if that is the look. But it was very colorful and creative. And I enjoyed it. And I love the shimmers. The shimmers and their formula and their palettes are always so very nice. The mattes are lovely to work with. So I enjoyed this. But when we're talking about all the palettes that I use, color story is just not me, hence why it's landing a little bit lower. Next up, we're going to be putting the Green Goddess 3 palette from Makeup Monsters here. This palette kind of surprised me by how meh I was about it, and hence why I'm putting it where it's at in the countdown. It does have two glitters that I don't think I used at all, just because I wasn't feeling the chunky glitter <laughs> at all. But something I found as I was doing looks with it is that it's really hard to get a lot of creativity and a lot of depth with this palette. It's a very like mid-tone to light palette. The deepest color is this, but it doesn't get that dark. This is darker, but it's a shimmer, so it has a little bit of lightness to it. And I don't know, anytime, I create a lot of looks with this, but all the looks that I got, every time I completed it, I was just like, eh, it's okay. Like, it's a green look. I don't know. I never did a look that I was like, wow, this is so pretty. I love it. The quality was fine. The shimmers were fine. They're nothing super blinding, but they, they're they okay. Um, the mattes, I never had any issues blending it, but they're just so very light and pale that, you know, it didn't, it took a lot of kind of building up or just, you know, packing on to get intensity that I like to see in a palette. So, I don't know. For me, overall, I just, whenever I look at this palette, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. So that's why I figured it would end where it's at in the countdown towards the bottom because it just didn't wow me. It didn't stand out in my mind. It was just an okay palette. Next is going to be Half Cosmetics Snack Pack Palette. This was a cute little palette, but again, even though I think the quality is really nice and I enjoyed the palette and the looks that I got of it were fun and, you know, creative and different and very bright, Anytime that I think back to this palette and I was, uh, you know, as I was creating looks with it, and when I was done, I would just look at the look and be like, eh, it's okay. Like, it, nothing about it wowed me. It was always just like, okay. And I think part of the drawback with me is that they have very neutral colors in here, and maybe that's why I'm just a little bit underwhelmed, because when I went into here to create looks, grabbing a palette like this, like, I wanted all the looks to be very popping and very colorful, because it's such a colorful looking palette. But, I mean, besides these two being very bright, and also this orange being super bright, the other colors are a lot more softer and pastel and so when you try to mix those with these very very light neutral mauve tones it just lightened the whole look as a whole and I was just like no I want it like super punching I want it super vibrant I want it super colorful and fun so I think that's why I was never wowed by this look I definitely can say like I enjoyed looks from it but thinking back over it you know and all the looks that I got from this and whenever I was playing around with it 
It never wowed me. It never left an impression. And kind of like I said for the Green Goddess 3 palette, whenever I was done with the look, I was like, hmm. Okay. It didn't blow my socks off. It didn't stand out in my memory. So hence why I am landing it where it's at. Because I should say, like, quality-wise, I think it's a really nice quality. The mattes are very, very nice to work with and very easy to blend. But something about it just didn't stand out that much for me. All right, moving right along. Next is going to be the Actesis Lunas palette. This palette was a really fun color story. Definitely, like, for springtime, but also fall, I got a lot of really pretty looks out of it. I was very pleased with this palette. It, it wasn't anything that blew my socks off or that was just, like, oh, my goodness, the pigmentation and the color story just, you know, stuck out in my memory as being so very amazing. But the mattes are really nice. Like, they feel nice. They blend nice. They have nice pigmentation. There is no really deep, deep shade, but there is a little bit of depth there with that mauve tone. And then the shimmers, these two shimmers are super, super pretty. Almost like metallic or just sparkly. They have something special to them that are just so very pretty. Ooh. Whenever you wear them on your eyes, whenever you have them in an eye look, they look so beautiful and I love them. So for me, I was very impressed with this, but when I think back to all the palettes that I tried, all the eye looks that I tried, this is a palette that I really did enjoy, but I tried a lot of amazing palettes, so I couldn't put it that high because I feel like, you know, whenever I did the looks, there was one or two that I was like, yes, wow, I love this. But the others were just, eh, it's okay. And like I said, these shimmers really didn't impress me. And, you know, the looks didn't go as deep as I wanted them to if there was like a black in here or just something to really deepen it out and give a little more versatility that way. With it being as it is, it's a really nice, like, kind of mid-tone type of palette that gives really beautiful looks for the springtime. Overall, it's just, it was a nice palette. I did enjoy it. So hence why it's kind of landing right in that kind of middle-ish spot in my countdown. Next is K-Lab's Triumph of Venice palette. This is the other palettes with Honor that they launched at the same time, and this is a really fun color story. I love the very cool tone, but still kind of a little splash of warmth in there with this color story of just being almost gray and taupey with the blue. It was just so much fun. The looks that I created mixing this orange and almost like mustard with these very cool tone tones was so much fun, and I love those type of looks that kind of mix and match things together. It's very much striking. The formula of this is very, very nice. I had a great time. It isn't landing super high just because as a whole this color story I feel like I got two looks that stand out in my mind as just being so very fun and memorable but overall there are, we're going to be talking about a lot of palettes that stand out even higher in, in my head because I enjoyed them so very much but it is a really great palette really do enjoy it and definitely love the k Love Beauties formula it's so nice their mattes blend so beautifully and their shimmers are really nice and smooth and pigmented shimmers Next up, I put Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead Lethal is Dead palette. This baby right here is such a gorgeous little palette. I think the biggest thing and the reason it's not getting higher is because depth-wise, you couldn't get a whole lot of like intense depth. There are darker shades in here, but when you actually use them and blend them out, I feel like as a whole, the looks that I was getting from this palette were very like springy because they had that softness to them. They had that toned downness to them, or maybe like a pastel winter. That's a good way of describing them. Like very pastelish but winterish because it has a coolness to all of the shades. Still very pretty. I still really enjoyed them, but that's why it's not landing super high because you guys know you're going to get sick of hearing me say this, but I like depth in my looks and whenever I can't get it deep enough, I'm just always a little... I don't know, not to say unhappy with, but I don't know, if it had a little bit more depth, I think I would love it a little bit more, if that makes sense. But anyway, quality-wise of Lethal Cosmetic Shadows is amazing. Their matte formula blends so beautifully, so easily, and their shimmers are very nice. They're very soft to the point of it almost is hard to see that this is a purple on your eye, this is a peach on your eye, and this is like a greeny gold on your eye because they're so very pale. They almost all look the same. So for that reason, I'm not a big fan of that type of shadow, and that's another reason it's not landing super high. But formula-wise, it's a very nice formula to work with. The Metamorphosis Lady Nay Palette was another great palette that I really did enjoy. This is such a fun color story. It's a color story that's like so fallish. All the looks that I created are very much me when it comes to fall and, you know, colorful fall vibes. I really did enjoy it. I do wish there was a little more depth with this palette. I don't know, if this green or this red had a, just a ton more depth bordering on black, I feel like I would have put a little bit higher and then maybe if the shimmers had a little bit of sparkle to them. Because while they're really nice shimmers and have, you know, a decent amount of, you know, shine to them, they're nothing like super sparkly. They're nothing super metallic so they're nothing to stand out that much in my mind they're just nice shimmers but anyway overall I really did like this palette I like the look that I got from it and the quality was nice the mattes were they're more drying feeling when you touch them and when you swatch them but when you pack them on your eyes they show up really nicely I was very pleased with them and overall it's just a really nice palette this from here on out is getting really difficult for in my countdown because there are just so many great palettes that I tried for the last half of the year I'm really going off of preferences so there are going to be some that are down low at the bottom but when you try like you know 20 palettes that are amazing there's going to be have to be one that comes in 20 spot but it doesn't mean that 20 spot is bad so i hope that makes sense but i really did enjoy this but considering the other palettes we're going to talk about soon hence why it's landing where it's at but very impressed with metamorphosis cosmetics and hope to try more of them in the future 
Next up is going to be the DD Signatures a Juicy Skewer Palette. This palette right here, I think the standout shade for me is this duo chrome in here. It's called Strawberry. It looks like pinky in one sense, but then when you kind of move it around, it goes to gold. It is absolutely gorgeous and stunning when you use it on your eyes and when you're turning your head. Oh, so, so beautiful. But as you can see, it's a very red tone palette. So while I did get looks out of this that I did like, and I love this more than I thought I would. Now, is it kind of like a my vibe? Like the, today's look, I feel like it's very my vibe because that's the green and you guys know I love green. With it being red, I definitely felt a little out of place or like not out of place, but just a little out of character for me personally because it was so intensely red and whatnot. But when I used the yellow heavily in a look, it actually kind of softened it out to orange and created a like really fiery type of eye looks or just very fall-esque type of eye looks. And I was into that. So overall, I enjoyed this palette a whole lot more than I thought of and hence why I'm placing it where it's at. And the shimmers in this palette just... Ugh so beautiful. Definitely make the palette and just make it that much more special because they are gorgeous. Next up, I decided to place the Cash Beauty Color Trip Palette. This palette I was so torn on because I am not a fan of the shimmers and I am not a fan of the cake liners. However, the mattes in here are pretty amazing. Like, they blend very well. Most all of them are just so soft to the touch. There are a couple, I think more so the red ones, that feel a little dry, but still, even with the red feeling dry, it's very pigmented and just blending wise and putting these together, I had a great time. Like, I never had any issues when it came to blending. Every time like it was so very easy to get there with the mattes. The issues with this palette came with the shimmers and the cake liners. I mean the shimmers being that I mean one I hit pan on and I just feel like that was awful quick and no it didn't break and fall on the floor. I was using it and that's just how I guess little or just how much you have to use. I'm not sure which, but overall I'm just not super big fan of the shimmers, but there are only three. So hence why I'm putting it smack dab in the middle because I was like, I don't know where to put this because I love the mattes, but I don't like anything else in this palette. So I, I decided to put it here on my countdown. So yeah, this, I have a very big like love hate and it's not even hate like it's terrible. I wouldn't choose to use the cake liners again unless I decide to take this traveling and those were the only cake liners I used and I really wanted to use cake liners, but the shimmers, well, I'll use them. They're just a pain. All right, next up is the Red Dragon Palette from Odin's Eye. This is a collab with Judy, and oh my goodness, I was surprised how much I like this because it's a very kind of boring type of a palette because it's just so kind of neutral, mauve -y. However, there's a lot of intensity you can get in here with these really deep tones. There's a lot of grunge you can get with the green, and this multi-chrome is so very pretty. And then there's this bit bright, fiery red that you could go really, really vibrant on your look. So while looking at this, you can get a lot of very soft, very mauve -y type of tones. You can also go really big and bold with this as well, which I was able to get with my looks, and I really appreciate that about this palette. So surprisingly, I'm putting it relatively high because I love the formula, I love this multi-chrome, I love the bit of grunge I was able to get from this palette, and overall it surprised me. That I think is the biggest reason it's landing so high because it surprised me of how much I enjoyed it, even though it is a very unlike me type of palette to fall in love with. I really did like it. I thought it was very, very pretty. Okay, I really need to speed up because I've been talking way too long. I'm going to have to edit so much out to make sure this video isn't an hour long. So next up in this counter is going to be from What's Up Beauty, their Desert Monsoon palette. This palette is absolutely gorgeous for the shimmers. The mattes were just a little bit boring to me just because of the colors being so neutral. However, with saying that, the mattes are insanely pigmented, insanely beautiful to blend, and insanely smooth like to feel and to use. The quality is amazing. I can't wait to see What's Up Beauty launch a like colorful palette because if they can use this formula when it comes to how creamy their mattes are with colorful shadows they're gonna be beautiful. So I'm keeping my eye on them and waiting for them to come out with a colorful one. But the shimmers also, like if they can give colorful shimmers in this formula, this formula is blinding. Like the shimmer has so much sparkle, so much intensity, so like foil looking. They're stunning. I had a great time when I was using this. I really did enjoy it. But overall, the only reason like it didn't blow me out of the water is because the math in it aren't super creative. Overall, I really did enjoy this palette. I'm placing it here because I had to put it somewhere and I feel like middle-ish of the row definitely was a great palette. Next up is going to be Menagerie's Indigo Ink Palette. This palette is one of those palettes, again, kind of a love-hate relationship. I'm not a big fan of the shimmers, but the mattes in here are really nice, but some of the mattes in here, like these two, I really wish could have been different because they're literally, they look the same on your eyelid. So with this palette, you know, there's aspects that I love about it, but other aspects that I'm not the craziest big fan of, like the shimmers I'll still use them, they're just not my preferred formula. So overall, that's why I'm kind of sticking it middle of the road because formula-wise, I really do like the matte formula in here. It's so 
beautiful. And then color story wise, it's very unique. It really made me think, really made me kind of step outside of the box and really think of different type of ways to put colors together. And the shimmers, they're pretty. They're just I, a little bit of a pain to put on. Overall, placing it right in the middle because I did like it, but there are other palettes I tried this year or this last half of the year that I liked more. Next is going to be Endangered Cosmetics Sea Turtle Palette. I really did like this palette. It's just a great palette. Like, I just really enjoyed it. The mattes in here surprised me with being just so really creamy and easy to work with and beautiful, like whenever I created them in a look. And the shimmers also floored me with how intense they are. Not all of them. I would say the blues are definitely a little bit of just like a simple shimmer, but that gold that gold was beautiful. It's like show stopping. It's so very pretty. But yeah, this color story, it's a little nine pin palette. I do wish maybe this was something different. But with saying that I did use this several times to be that kind of like transition shade out to my brow bone and to soften out, you know, these shadows because the mattes in here are very deep, dark or bright. So it is nice to have that in there to use almost like as a transition shade and just like an invisible transition shade, if that makes sense. The one thing I did not like is that these two on the lid don't look that different. I wish there was more differentiation between the green and the blue. That's literally my only thing. Overall, great palette. Really did like it, hence why I was making it at the top. Next up is Odin's Eye Cat's Breath Palette. This palette surprised me with how much I enjoyed it, even though I wasn't a fan of the shimmers. Like the shimmers in here, I'm not a fan of because they're so, they're almost like those topper type of eyeshadows where you do your look and then you want a little bit of sparkle and pizzazz and just gorgeousness on your eyes. So you take your finger and you pat it over, but it doesn't give a lot of color, it just gives a lot of sparkle. Cause that's, that's the kind of formula you see here. You can get some color, but you really have to spend a good bit of time like this green and even the green, like as you can see, it's a green, but it's so soft and almost like silver that when you put this on in a look, it doesn't look as intense and as punchy in color. However, with that said, the looks that I got from this palette, I remember vividly and I remember enjoying them so much that, and like surprisingly or loving them so much, I was really surprised with how much I enjoyed the looks that I got with this palette that I had to put this high in my countdown because it was just so very pretty. This orange also, so intense, so beautiful. So yeah, all the looks that I look back on this, I always see them and I go like, oh yeah, that came from Cat's Breath. It's so beautiful. Next up is going to be the Kaleidos and Angelica Nyquist Club Nebula palette. This palette, I know everyone's already raved about it, and I'm the last person to talk about it on my channel, but it is a gorgeous palette. I love this palette mostly for the mattes, because the mattes are just so beautiful. Most of the shimmers, which are these three over here, are very, like, translucent in their color. Like, they show very, you know, they show that they're very colorful here, but when you use them, they're very translucent in that you can see underneath them, so they're more of those kind of, like, sparkly topper shadows. But they had these two that had a decent amount of color to them, so I got a lot of looks that I love loved from this palette and definitely like just show stopping so beautiful the sparkle in it is amazing but when we're talking about my preferences I do wish these had more saturation of color to them and they weren't such topper shadows but that's how she intended it so just kind of pointing out my preferences but overall matte formula in here a dream to work with. So very smooth, so very blendable. I loved all the deep dark colors up here. They were so fun to work with and overall, yeah, that's why it's getting a top spot because it's just amazing. Next up is going to be the Poison Ivy palette by Milan Rose. I just, re or Ro, Milan Rose. It's Doodles by the Bunnies collaboration with them. I just recently put up a review with this palette and I was so very impressed with the mattes in this palette. Like, oh my goodness, they are intense. They are gorgeous. They are beautiful. They are blendable. They are a dream to work with. The shimmers in here, I, I enjoy about half of them. The other half were either very, you know, sheer, more of a toppery tone or a little bit flaky to work with. And one is a glitter, but overall, even with those, you know, not being absolute loves in this palette, I still really love the eye looks that I got from this. And I still really loved working with the matte formula. Like it is so beautiful. Makes me think of like Kaleidos, Menagerie, Ace Bute, Glam Light, Gimme Glow, that type of formula. It's so very buttery smooth, so very pigmented. Absolutely enjoyed it. So yeah, I had to get pretty high on my countdown. Okay, top 10. We're on to the top 10. Next up is going to be the Tropical Skewer Palette from DD Signature. This palette really surprised me with the color combination. Again, another palette I mentioned in the Unique Palettes from 2021 because this vibrant and neon of an orange with these shades of blue was unexpected, especially with the silver two and the black. It was unexpected, but the looks that I got, every single one was just like mouth-dropping beautiful. Like, I love the combination. I loved how unique and different it was from what I typically get in an eye look. And it was also very striking and memorable like the looks that I got anytime I come across one of the looks that I share on my Instagram I'm like oh yeah that's from the DD signature palette and it's just so very beautiful I really did enjoy playing with this palette formula is very very nice the shimmers and these shimmers aren't as like metallic sparkly but they're very nice shimmers they're very intense shimmers I really did enjoy them Next up is the Exotic Skewer Palette from DD Signature. This palette is such a beautiful palette I think the reason I'm putting these two up so high is because these two shimmers 
I cannot express to you how intensely gorgeous they are because they're so metallic and so sparkly. Like, they just are amazing. Like, do you see all that shine? Oh my goodness, all the looks that I did using this palette were just so beautiful because the lid had such intensity to the sparkle, like it almost looked unreal, like it was that intense of a sparkle. And I remember getting comments about it when I did Instagram videos of like, oh my goodness, that sparkle is intense. And I think it was this shadow or a combination of the two. It is, like it's so, it's like blinding, that's how intense it is. And that's definitely a reason why it's getting so high in the countdown, just because it's just, you know, it stands out in my memory of being amazing. And even if you didn't like the mattes in here, I think this palette's worth picking up for these two. Not to say that the mattes aren't good, because I love the mattes as well. And the mattes with this, these choices are so unique. They really make you step outside and get creative with your looks with the purple, green, and pink. Like how creative is that? This is a palette that I did not mention in my unique palettes. And I don't know why I didn't. It was just a slip up that I didn't grab for it because I really do feel like this is a fun, unique, and different color story and the looks that you get out of it are just so fun, unique, and different. Next up from DD Signature is the Caramel Skewer Palette. This palette had such a fun and unique color story. It's so very, I mentioned this recently as one of the unique palettes in my unique palettes from 2021 video, which is already out. It's got such a fun color story. I've already gone on and on about it. I love the combination. The looks that you could get from it were so very fun. And these two shimmers are just so intense. The amount of like uh, sparkle you get in them when you have them on your eyes, they just sparkle and shine so much. So very intense. And I think this is even a multi crime because it's like blue green or is it purple it's like a purple blue and green it's just got all of it in there it's so very pretty so yeah definitely a palette I absolutely love and had to go rather high in my countdown okay next up is the Ace Beauté Falling For You palette this palette surprised me because as I've said a million times when I first saw this online I did not think it would be a palette for me because it looks so neutral but I got in my boxy charm and oh my goodness it's so very colorful this red is like neon red it is so beautiful this shade right here is just so gorgeous this red is stunning all of the shimmers in here are so very pretty They're so much sparkle to them they're very metallic looking and all of the mattes blend so beautifully together so this is another palette that I absolutely love I feel a little bad I'm not putting it higher but y'all from here on out it's just getting hard because I love all of the palettes but I had to put them in some type of order so ranking is hard next up is what's on my eyes today this is a dirty martini palette from Glamlight. I love this palette for the mattes but I'm not the biggest fan of the shimmers hence why I did an all matte look today but the shimmers are pretty but they are not super colorful and pigmented and they're again more of that shadow that's just very sparkly and beautiful on the eyes but don't give a lot of color which if you like that you know this will be right up your alley but for me I like a lot of color they're a pain to pick up with a brush which is another reason why I'm not the biggest fan of it because it just takes so long to apply them, especially if you wanna see them as intense as you see in the pan. If you want that intensity, you have to pick it up with a finger or some type of silicone brush to really pack it on there because a the brush just kinda of dulls it out overall. And then I just feel like there are so many shimmers and some of these shimmers look almost identical on the eyes that I feel like you could have put more colorful mattes in there, but that's just me getting nitpicky. I will say I think the matte formula is amazing. I really did enjoy it. And it's a green theme palette. This green theme lover had a great time with it and I had no issues blending, which I am always a fan of. If I can get grungy green looks without having issues blending, that's a plus. So hence why it's blending so high. Next up is going to be Odin's Eye and the Fancy Face, the Hummingbird palette. Tina collaborated with them on this palette and just look at all that color. The shimmers in here are so very beautiful. They're so intense. This is a multi-chrome that is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And all the mattes in here as well, they blend so beautifully. They are so pigmented, so intense. This red does stain, and I think the purple. I did a look where I did the purple on the outer corner, the red in my crease, and I think the green and purple on the lid. And the night I took it off, I, it, it was a stainy mess. Like, my eyes looked beet red. So I don't know if it's just this red tone here or if the purple played into it a little bit as well, but just a heads up. You do get some staining, but I don't really care about staining because I put stuff on my eyes every single day regardless so it's a gorgeous palette the shimmers in here are so blinding and beautiful the mattes blend so well and I just love the color stories so yeah feel like I'm getting to be a broken record here at the end but it is gorgeous and all the looks that I created just stand out in my mind as just being so beautiful unique and fun you guys know this was getting high, but next is Odin's Eye Giant Wolves Palette. This palette is so beautiful. Annette did an amazing job. This is a collab with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. She did a great job giving something different, fun, and unique, and this is just an ideal winter palette. And if you like these type of tones, definitely recommend picking this up. And I feel like it's very unique from what you typically see on the market. She did a great job giving something different with this palette. And at the same time, while it gives so many dark tones, I feel like it's also very versatile, and the types of looks that I was able to get were very different, fun, and unique, and the shimmers in here this multi-chrome oh my goodness it's absolutely beautiful stunning and blinding and I also love this grungy corner 
probably my favorite corner like those three together wow the look that I got was so very beautiful and especially there's a black in here Annette and I are very similar and I love a very deep outer corners and black scent palettes so she put one in there and it is absolutely beautiful so stunning so smooth so intense so yeah definitely another favorite of mine had to land towards the top next up is going to be in the third spot the serenity palette from menagerie and Annette from Annette's makeup corner this palette literally every single look that I did with this palette stands out in my mind as being amazing special unique different fun show-stopping vibrant all the all the words you can say that's what I got from this palette like every time I use this palette I got so many compliments on how creative how colorful it was how many colors I could put in a lid how blinding the colors were oh also I have to say like the shimmers in this palette I don't typically like menagerie shimmers but every one of these shimmers in this palette I love so Annette did a great job working with menagerie and my recommendation to menagerie would be whatever you use to create this formula for Annette keep on doing it in future palettes because it is amazing they're so pigmented so easy to work with like Look how intense, so beautiful. They go on so nicely with a brush and they're just so sparkly and beautiful. And yeah, I could go on and on. She did a great job, it's such a fun palette. So beautiful, so colorful. All the mattes blend together and work together so well. All the shimmers are just blinding and beautiful. And yeah, had to get number three because it is just stunning. Okay, the last two I kept putting, like replacing them and changing them out like 10 times a day. I was like, oh, I'll do this one, no, I'll do this one. So I put them here. And the main reason I'm putting this at number two is because it's a very heavily monochromatic palette and the other one has more versatility and different things you can do. That's literally the only way I could decide where to put this. The first one we're going to talk about for the second spot is the Ace Beauté Tropical Vibes palette. I wanted to put this first just because of how much I loved it. It is such a gorgeous palette. The formula of their mattes are amazing. Like a dream to work with. So intensely pigmented, so buttery smooth, so many options in here for grungy green lovers. I loved it. I created an all matte grungy green smoky eye with this palette. I loved it so much. It was the first video I, I posted in my Kate Mess, so I'll leave that linked up here if you missed it, but oh my goodness, it was stunning. Like the mattes are just so smooth, so easy to blend. And the shimmers in here, there's only three, but they're very blinding, very glittery, very beautiful. I just love this palette so much, but I did place it at number two because as you can see, like it's a little limiting when it comes to the color options. And, but why I say that, it's still creative because you have these different tones in here that do give you some creativity. So it's not so heavy on the monochromatic that's like a one trick pony type of things. I created, I think eight looks with this palette and I want to create more because it's just that beautiful, that gorgeous, that inspiring, and just a palette that's just so me. I feel like I would never get bored of it. So I really do love it. Wanted to place it at number one, but I decided to put it right here at number two. And for number one, the reason it went out over the Tropical Vibes palette was because it is the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. And as you can see, it's a grungy palette, but it has a little bit of extra versatility with the blue and the red. And that's just something so very special. This is a palette I took on a trip for a week and I you know, used it for the week, the entire week that I was there. And I never got bored because there's just so many different things you could do in this palette. You get like super new neutral so so neutral you could go red you could go green you could go very bright blue you could go minty green possibilities are endless the formula in here is amazing the mattes are buttery smooth and pigmented and all the shimmers so there's a lot more shimmers in here than the other palette all the shimmers are gorgeous like they're super sparkly super smooth super easy to apply with a brush yeah I had to put this at number one when I was kind of going back and forth between these two I was like oh, I want to put them both out number one I finally settled on putting this number one because it's just got so much going for it when it comes to this palette. You got versatility, you got different, you know, type of looks you could go, do different hues. You got amazing formula for the shimmers, amazing formula for the mattes, great price. Overall, just a fantastic, fantastic palette. So I had to put it at number one. Okay, we have finally made it to the end of this ranking video. Those are all the rankings that I'm doing for the last half of 2021. And now I have to get down and dirty and figure out the entire ranking for the whole year. Oh, that sounded weird, sorry. I'm gonna get down on the floor and really get into the nitty gritty of these palettes and figure out where I'm gonna place them and see if I need to change anything around. Y'all, whenever I do ranking videos, it's literally me in that moment sitting there thinking through which eyeshadows, as I said, which eyeshadow looks that I created using the palette stand out the most and which palettes inspire me and I enjoyed the most using and want to use again those go higher in the ranking than than palettes that either I hated using or don't impress me as much so I'm gonna be ranking my top 30 palettes from 2021 so a lot more really fun palette videos still to go for December of 2021 before the year's over so with all that said that's gonna do it for me I'm gonna keep this outro short and sweet because my throat hurts the video is long so we can wrap it up here if you're not following me over on Instagram I'm LadyKatie92 over there and I share reels tutorials all that sort of thing we have a lot of fun over there if you would like to follow me and yeah with that said I'll see you guys very soon in my next video bye